the back of the London Ultra Cup this week we have one of the baddest riders from back in the day and you could say a graph royalty from the legendary Tough Arts crew the one and the only Scarf how you doing my man? yeah I'm good brother it's good great to have you in the cab no 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 it's good bruv and drop me, drop me in some like serious history um, absolute honour and I, you know, as I said to you, I'm, I was like a big fan of Tough Arts back in the day. You know, you was one of them crews that basically, um, you know, was raising the bar. Yeah. You know? Um, and for me, you know, the biggest two crews out of South East London was Tough Arts and London Giants. Oh, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Without, yeah. without that. Yeah, yeah. You know, so a absolutely, um, you know, a absolute honour to have you in the cab. I can't wait to talk about, you know, the old the old stories and have like a little, little old school chinwag. Go for it. All right. So like first first question I always ask is where are you from and what was it like growing up as a kid? Well, uh, I grew up in uh, Deptford. Did you? As, yeah, as a kid, I sort of moved about, ended up in Eltham for a bit, moved to South Africa for a, for a year, came back and sort of ended up in Bromley. Right. So, so how, how long was you living in Deptford for? Oh, yeah, most of my uh, childhood, really. Where, whereabouts in Deptford? Peeps Estate. Oh, Peeps? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did you go down Manzies Pie and Mash, down the... Uh... Deptford High Street? Uh, no, there used to be a place in Greenwich. The old man used to take me there, so... Yeah. But, I, yeah. That's, I, I smell, I didn't know you was from Deptford. Yeah, because my, my nan and granddad was from there. They lived on uh, Florence Road. Yeah. And what, um, what, like, what music was you into back then? What, what was there? You know, mad... I suppose, uh, you know, I was into the specials and stuff like that. A bit of Scar and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. When I was younger. But, um... Pretty much kicked off with the hip hop, right? You know, then I, yeah, I was into it. He was right, bang into it. And what um, was you into art when you was a kid? Yeah, I've always, I've always sort of uh, like, always been drawing. And um, there's something about it. There's a, there's like a, you know, I'm like a, an only child, and um, there's something about that peacefulness and. Uh, being on your own sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. So, While well, you was getting kind of zoned out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I draw every morning, pretty much. What, even now? Yeah, yeah. I've never really stopped. Uh, I mean, I left like graph in say eighty nine, mm. and uh, but I never stopped drawing it. So yeah, there's something about it. You know, it's just. Yeah, you know, I'll spend a couple of hours in the morning and I'll just, uh, you know, I'll just zone out and draw whatever's, yeah, like, yeah. in your head sort of thing, yeah. so, but... And, uh, uh, you know, how, how did you get into uh, writing? Was you kind of inspired by, by certain films or maybe some, like, some books or, like, you know, like, style, uh, like, subway art or...? Yeah, I'm just going to be cliche about it. It's, like... <laughs> Subway Out come out and it was just Was that know. was that was you writing before then? I was sorta of into the music and I was kind of not really drawing it. But um yeah that book came out and it was you know, yes I robbed it from W H Smith <laughs> like everybody else. Yeah, hands up there. Right. Like, who never? <laughs> but uh yeah I was just fascinated with the, what they was doing. You know, not just not just that they were on trains. It was like this is this is different. This is you know, it's like spelling your name, but the way they was putting the letters together, and and I was I was just fascinated by it. And I was like, I mean, I bit the shit out of that book just to just to it, work out the technique. It was you mainly biting, like it's like scene and scene. Yeah, yeah. scene was uh, yeah. Pretty much seen, yeah. And you know what? What? What come first? Was it? Was it the hand style, the tagging, or was it? Uh, was it the graph? The graph lettering? No, I was tagging first. Tagging. Yeah. I, so how did you get into the tagging? The tagging, you just kind of, you know, you kind of saw it, like programs and stuff, and of course the book, 
and you would get on a bus and like there'd be tags on the bus you know um I mean there was people before me like custom boys and stuff like that I remember you, custom boys yeah yeah um bus boys you had yeah because because I was saying to you earlier we we used to bus boys were our rivals because we used to put up LTS we stood for London Transport Scribblers yeah and bus boys you know they they was everywhere as well over you know our neck of the woods yeah they yeah. hammer hammer the buses because I used to go to uh, college in uh, Lewisham and um I mean that 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 bus that went through Lewisham. I mean they just they was on that all the time, and um, yeah. So I was sort of doing the because I lived in Bromley, so it would be the forty seven bus. So I'll just I'll just be bombing bombing the insides of that, and because um, those 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 South East London buses got battered. Do you know what I mean? There's oh, like, big time. They. You know, they they was like our playground. It's like you, you'd cane like the inside, the outside, bus stops, uh, phone boxes, yeah. even even the floor. Yeah. I don't even even like tagging on the floor, yeah. and um, you know everything got hit. That's the that's the thing about South London because we didn't really have the trains there. That's you right. Know, I mean, we had New Cross, and you know, that's a must. People had been doing trains like North London and stuff like that, and for me it was about. I've got to have more tags up than anyone else. I've got to have, I've got to have more paint than anyone else. I've got to, more pieces. I've got to hit everything. You got to tick all the boxes. Was you, was you hitting it more? With, you was obviously hitting it more with the tagging rather than the pieces. Back. Yeah, yeah. The pieces sort of came a bit later. Kind of shortly afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of I, I done this um, scene piece. Scene scene's got a piece in a book. I can't I can't remember which one, but um, it it was like semi wild style, and I pretty much copied that, but I made it say soul, and I painted that in I think it's some some estate in Bermondsey, because I knew the guy, uh, I knew someone on there, and they, he had this wall next to his house, so I painted it there. And, um, was, that, was that your first your that first was piece? My, uh, and that was done in car paint and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. But through that, the kids on the estate uh, started talking about it. So this is where I get to meet, I get to meet Seven Up. You know, people like Caution, Speed, Mad Two. I kind of meet them and then they kind of, they know Drone Two. And then Drone Two knows Plaz. So then we all sort of got together. So that was your kind of connection? Yeah, so right. that's, that's how we sort of started out, really, from that. Was, was, was you, was you uh, in like a certain crew then with, with all them guys? Or? Yeah, we kind of, we was uh, one crew at one point. You know, uh, we used to call ourselves the Crime Squad. The Crime Squad? Yeah, the Crime hmm. Squad. Uh, crime Squad. And, uh, <laughs> that's quite a funny name there. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, we started out with that, and we must have been, there must have been about 15 of us. And we was doing that for a while. Uh, we'd done a few pieces together. Players told us about Punt Lake, and Covent Garden was the place to go. For London Graphic? No, see, that's the shop you don't touch. Right, where was you going then? Well, you had loads of little shops around there. Right. right. The best shop for me uh, was a shop in Neil uh, Street. There was this little, I mean, it was like a shoebox. And you would go in there, there'd be some arty bird in there, like reading her book, not really paying much att like, attention. So um, I think me and Cece went in there one day. And I didn't look like a writer. See, I kind of, you know, I had a ponytail, you know, I, I would wear funny clothes, a uh, portfolio, you know, I looked like I was, I was supposed to be in the shop. So we go in this shop now and, uh, I mean, they used to put the bunt lack at, like, bottom shelf. And um, it was a, like a proper blind spot as well. So we like, uh, you know, filling up the bags. Next minute, Cece's sort of kicked me while while I'm while he's like being looked at. He said, "Look underneath." 
We've got boxes. I bunt back. Oh, that's a must, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's, yeah, I couldn't resist it. You were probably like little kids in a sweet shop, yeah. didn't you? And we must have been in this shop, in and out of this shop, for about two hours. Clean, cleaning it up? Yeah, so we've we, we done the shelf. Yeah, not not completely. There were still cans on the shelf. But I was like, no, I'm adamant. I, I, I want my painting boxes. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of, kind of, we kind of went out, we stashed the paint, somewhere and came back in the shop and just started taking the boxes <laughs> but there was there was loads of little shops around there but london graphics had been caned before i got up there so they and, tight, tightened up yeah, yeah and anyone that went in there trying to nick paint you, trust me you'll get nicked you'll get nicked yeah yeah nice no, right and you used to go out common garden people would go to you like where can i get bunt that you go, oh, London Graphics up there, that's the one for you. <laughs> you know, and send them up there. <laughs> and, they're, and they're walking there with a, like, an Adidas tracksuit and a belt buckle, and it's just game over, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah, no, big big time. Yeah, 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 you've blown, blown your cover, yeah. in. you got to go in in, in yeah. disguise. Paper Chase Tottenham Court Road was another good one. Yeah. Uh, bottom shelf again, uh, that, that got rinsed. But there, there was loads of little shops, there was just... You know, and we was doing it on a daily basis. I mean, I had so much paint when I stopped doing it. Unbelievable. <laughs> and then, then I spoke to Scott, and Scott went to me, did you still have paint when you you finished? I said, I had loads of it. But my mum chucked it all in the bin when I moved out. No. Yeah, seriously. And he went to me, have you got any idea how much that paint is worth? Just one can. And I've, yeah, I've heard stories like the cans go for thousands of pounds. What was it, mainly Buntlack? Yeah, Buntlack was just the paint. Nothing else. Them colours were lovely, weren't they? Them like, yeah. them, remember that lilac? Lilac, that lovely lilac the yeah. blue. For me, it was a cobalt, cobalt blue. The blue? Yeah, yeah, yeah that one. That just, was nice, wasn't it? Yeah, and it just went straight on the wall. And that was another box to tick. I mean, you had to nick your paint. Because for us, us really, in uh, in London, Buntlack was the game changer, wasn't it? Oh, big of time. Because before then, it was all crap, like car plan yeah, and all that. Like, yeah. you get it from Halfords and places like that. Yeah, And Wal yeah. I think Woolworth Salt like, had it as well. Oh, it was proper shit paint. It was crap, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. But when Buntlack come out, um, that, that was a game it, it, changer. It just, it just changed your whole piece. And it just went straight on the wall. You know, and uh, I mean, no one was no one was working, and it was like fifteen. What was it? Uh, fifteen quid a. It was. A it, tin? I can't remember, but yeah, I mean, um, I don't really know how much it was to be honest. Yeah. Because I uh, didn't really pay for it, but. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was. Yeah, but I loved all the racking. I loved all that. that you know what I mean? You know, that, just... that, that was all part of it, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. We used it was to go like out, an adventure. Remember, we used to go out. Do you remember the head head bags? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Call, <laughs> call, it the, call it the racking bag. And but, like you know, you'd go like it weren't just it weren't just uh, paint. It was other stuff as well. But uh, we know. kind of went a bit crazy on it in the end. It kind of we would just we kind of moved on from paint and. Um, Pretty much anything. I mean, trainers. Yeah, that's right. I was going to say sports, sports shops. Do you know what I mean? You know, you remember when they used to put the trainers outside the shops? Yeah. And it would always be like, you know, okay, it'd be the left, the left shoe, and it'd be like a nine, ten. That's right. Yeah, eight, nine, ten. All right. And then we found another shop that would put the right pair out. Do you, do you, do you know? Do you know what the maddest thing is? When when um when I interviewed Blade, MC Blade, big up Blade. If you're watching this, I'll tag you in on it. Yeah. He got his white Reeboks that he was well known for back in around 86, 87. He'd always wear white Reeboks. That's exactly what he done. He went to one shop. Yeah. He bought, he, he nicked basically the size, I think it was a size nine, and then when they put out, uh, went to another shop, they had the right one, yeah. the size nine, and he had a pair of trainers. Yeah, yeah. That's where you get yeah, his Reebok yeah. from. And it was always the same, it was always the eight, nine, ten. That's right. And yeah. we used to go to the seats, never mind, you're going to have to wait till Christmas. And well, was, it, was he a big it, size? It was like a 12 or something. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. Uh, but, that's so funny. Uh, so Walkman's as well. Oh, uh, Walkman's, yeah. Yeah, we was up 
Tottenham Court Road and um, the Sony's and the A. Remember the A was. Yeah. Do you remember the the, the Sony um, the shop the double sided tape cassette? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that yeah, yeah. that was the thing. Yeah. That was big money as well, wasn't it? Yeah. We found a shop. I think it was near Paper Chase, and you would go in, and you would have like the the cabinets there, and you would have all the the Walkmans up the top there. And the geezer was like, where the counter was, the geezer was like far down the end there. So, so he couldn't see what was going on? Well, he could, he could, when he was busy, you catch him when he's busy serving people and stuff. I so, don't know what, I don't even think there was, there was CCTV cameras no, back then, was there? there was, no. There weren't, was there? All no. they, do you remember them mirrors? They'd have a, like a mirror Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Them yeah. mirrors. Rubbish. Yeah, they're crap. <laughs> yeah. But I liked them. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we went in this shop and uh, we was like, Oh, they're all up the top there. So we nipped out, we got a carrier bag and an umbrella. So we went back in the shop, I'll open the bag and see, so just go like that. <laughs> Fill up the bag. By the time the guys realised, we're going. Down a runner. Yeah. But uh, any, anything, everything. I never paid for anything up there at that time. Clothes, food. Nah. I didn't pay for nothing. Maybe bus, bus fare to get up there, but. I'm no. surprised you didn't forge the bus pass to like that thing. <laughs> that's, what to... We, that's what we used to do. Yeah. With the, uh, we used to get an old bus pass and cut out the um, the, the number on it and then stick it with a bit of a, like, what do you call it? St uh, the, st the sticky stuff and stick it on, onto the pass and make it look like it was in date. Yeah. And you'd, yeah, flash, yeah, it, yeah. you'd flash it to them, wouldn't you? Yeah. But uh, I mean, later on, I mean, you would go to these stations and just pick up, there'd be travel cards there and stuff like that. You know, because the they, there was no one guard, no guards there on that. So travel card all day long. Yeah. And do, do you remember the Red Bus Rover? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> travel, travel anywhere in London. Yeah, that's the for, one. For the set price, I think it was about 60 pence or something, wasn't it? Definitely got bombed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I liked all that. You know, it all added to it. And go, going back to the uh, the graphing, back back to the hand style. What what did hand style mean to you? Well, it's the backbone of your sort of piece, isn't it? Really, you know. And um, for me, I, I wanted to be different with it. So I mean, a lot of people were doing, you know, just picking New York names and just putting a two on it or a number on it. So I kind of just went. Do you know what? I'm just going to do scarf. You know, and um, quite, if you think about it back then, it's quite a weird name. Today, it kind of fits in, really. You know, yeah, you cover your face or whatever, you know. But, uh, and it, it was just different. It, it kind of stood out. So, how, how did you get the name scarf? Do you know what painting? I think painting in the winter and shit like that, you know. And well, I'm you always, always had the scarf over your over your face. N not really, but uh, you know, uh, I think uh, aqua scoot and scarves were quite fashionable. That's right. So, uh, you know, I had one of them. So I pretty much got the name, used that, and started just putting that up. So, and pretty much just stuck with it. I mean, I've had a couple of aliases, but. Um, no, I pretty much stuck with the scarf. And going going back to South East London, I mean, uh, what what crews were coming in before um, you know be before Tough Arts and London Giants? Well, before us, uh, you've got you you had custom boys, you had um, just bombers, you had people like uh, Owen Dread came a lot, uh, pretty much our sort of time. Dread, yeah, I remember Dread. Yeah. Um, he had some nice pieces up. Yeah. I think he moved away. He wasn't in London that long because he used to paint with Uno and. Um, Uno was great, great at tagging. I remember seeing yeah. the Uno the, the tag. Because we done Supreme Team. Well, they they were they they were the dons, weren't they? Oh, they were just they just shit up. They were. And, so uh, so tell. I mean, I know who was in Supreme Team, but tell for for the viewers, he was in Supreme Team. We well, read. We had people like Artful Dodger, Plaz, um, Crash, Form, Juicy, uh, and Cast. Right. And I think there was someone else. I'm not too sure. I, 
the rust or someone like that there was someone else I think but um yeah and look what comes out of them you know I mean every one of them writers is absolute legend I mean I mean without them I mean I mean a lot of people don't really talk about Plaz as well but Plaz he was a wicked artist. oh yeah and uh, I mean and Plaz Plaz also looked the part as well didn't he like with the glasses and... oh yeah yeah proper b-boy yeah yeah sort of thing but um I mean, if it wasn't for them, you wouldn't have had, uh, you wouldn't have had giants. You wouldn't have tough arts, you know. You wouldn't have prime, you know, Hellraisers. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, Crash was Prime's mentor. You know, you wouldn't have them people, you know. And they I mean, used they, to have... you, you know, we talk about sort of uh, King graffiti kings and all that, but they are kind of they are graph royalty. Oh, they are just uh, for yeah. me. You had two crews, it, it was them and Chrome Angels. And for me, Supreme Team just uh, outshine them for what they've done in graph and their pieces. I mean, Arf, personally, I think Artful could have wiped the floor with Chrome Angels. You're awful dodger. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, awful, awful dodger. I'll tell you what, when I I was in Dulwich sometime, it was in 1985, I was in Dulwich and I heard about this piece had just been put up. And I've gone down there to find it and I found it and it said graffiti. And it had um, had a, like a little character of, a, of like, a, looked like a tube worker holding like his dinner bag or something like that with a tube <laughs> train behind him. It said graffiti. And I'll tell you, that blew me away. That, yeah, that piece yeah. totally blew up. Oh, I'd never seen anything really like that before then of that kind of calibre. Yeah. And down the road from that, I see um, Controlling the City, for many girls Controlling the City, which was done by uh, London Giants. Yeah, yeah. And then them two pieces for me were like next level for 90, 1985. Yeah. yeah, and that stuff still, I mean, them pieces just stayed on the wall. Everyone respected them pieces. I heard they, they just, stayed on the wall for years. They just, no one would touch them, you know? Yeah. And, um, I mean, the Giants piece, I mean, that, that's that got a bit of a story behind that. Yeah, let's, but, let's, um, do, you want to, do you want to say about the story behind well, that? Well, what it was is um, Prime Hellraisers go head to head with them. So there's a battle piece done. And um, I think Prime done his in Bethnal Green. Bethnal Green, yeah. They had their one there. And um, Giants had theirs, I think it was a back of New Cross Fire Station or somewhere somewhere around there. And I remember uh, remember bumping into Prime and he was like, yeah, just had a battle with them. Blah, blah, blah. Come and have a look at the pieces and stuff like that. Prime smashed them. Absolutely destroyed them. Juski wasn't involved though. And the story I heard, Juski was pissed off about it. So then you get that piece in Dulwich. So and, that's, that and, was kind and, of like the come. And, yeah, the that come is like, piece. yeah. And pretty much Juski takes control of that whole piece there, you know. And that's. That's how that's how you get that piece. That that you know? that that piece was next level. I but, mean, them them two two like, characters either side and um, yeah, just the whole whole thing about it was like it was unbelievable, wasn't it? Yeah, it's, it is absolutely a wicked piece. And um, but Prime Prime just wants to battle them all the time, you know. He just <laughs> <laughs> and what I noticed about Giants, they're not very good at racking paint. So for me, I'm just sitting back watching. I'm just like, all right, they can't rack paint. So we'll rack more paint and we'll put <laughs> up more pieces. We'll put up more tags and we're just, we're gonna phase them out. And that was the plan really. And uh, I say to people, yeah, you know, people say to me, why did you nick so much paint? And I said, to start off, it was the dry out giants, but is to dry you all out. <laughs> I'm yeah, just gonna yeah. shut down every bundlet shop that's fucking got paint. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna rinse it. When you go in there now, it's gonna be hot for you. 
And that that was the the, the thought process for me. But uh, you can see in pictures where they sort of where they're running out of paint because they go from these big bunt like pieces and then they go they go to smaller pieces and you see the silver paint come out now. And I I think not a lot of people were doing pieces in silver at a time. So they've kind of gone to that silver thing with car paint. And then, then, then they just, that's it. Well, go, going they back start. to that uh, controlling the city for many girls piece in, uh, in, in Dulwich, there was like a little ca a character above the whole piece and it looked like it was half finished. Right. Do you remember it? It looked like it had like some kind of American um, sort of like uh, baseball, like no, like them like helmet type things they wear with the two. Oh yeah, the visor. Yeah, the visor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looked like it was half, like half finished, like looking down on the piece. Okay. I'll have to, I'll have to look back on the uh, on my photographs of it, but um, but Cause, yeah. Because I don't know who was on that job. I, I know. Um, Juski pretty much took control of it, but character-wise, I mean, the people that were doing characters, Juski, I think Zone One, and uh, Form would do characters as well, but um, I'm not sure who done the characters on that. But, um, yeah, wicked piece. Wicked oh, was piece. It, was, you know it, was I mean? it was next level, wasn't it? You know, and that's, that stuff just inspired you to do stuff as well. You know, oh, big time. You, know, and you, you know, you can't take nothing away from them. I mean, I, you know, I was I was doing stuff myself. You know, I've been doing it for for a couple of years. Uh, bef you know, and but but that that was setting the bar. It kind of changed. Like 1985, there was only a few crews in London that was kind of changing things up. One one of them crews were Tough Arts. Also, London Giants, the Chrome Angels, Nonstop. And you had the vinyl junkies, which were a bit further out. Yeah, 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 yeah. They were kind of really the main kind of. It was of like group. starting to move into sort of like big production. And did, did you notice it was very kind of futuristic looking, the pieces? Yeah, yeah. That, that it was pretty much everyone was doing the same sort of style. And I think. I think people like non stop, like North London, was sort of copying South London. Because we, be, we, we were doing that a lot before them. And uh, everyone was sort of, it was like a trend. You know, if you look at the characters, they're pretty much, they've either like got a gun or they've, they're wearing a helmet or a visor. Mm -hmm. they're, they're pretty much everyone's characters are on the same sort of format at that time. But um, you say about it, I mean, I, I, I've given you some stuff there and um, You've got some giant stuff there, so yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll dig them out at the end, and we'll have a little little uh, chat chat about them them photographs. Scarf, going back to uh, tough arts. You know, how, how did tough arts form, and who, who was in the crew? Right, um, Plaz said to us we should uh, kind of split from Seven Up and um, be like our own sort of our own sort of crew sort of thing and um, in the beginning Plaz wasn't in Tough Arts so it was just me, Cease and Drone and of course we are paint with Plaz but um, he was looking for a name so and Plaz came up with uh, Tough Wanted Arts right so that's how it started out Tough uh, Wanted Arts yeah but tagging it up was just too many letters, so it just ended up being that wanted, just cut out and just tough arts. Tough arts. Yeah. Artful Dodger wanted to get back into graph. He'd been doing a lot of gallery work and stuff like that. So Cause, he cause like, Artful Dodger was kind of like a one-man band, wasn't he? He weren't really. Was yeah. he down with with any of the crews or? We well, was friends with people, but. Um, he wasn't really, he wasn't on the street. No. Nah. You know, so, but uh, he decided to come back. He was painting with a guy called Kev One, and he wanted Plaz to join. So, um, I mean, Plaz done a couple of things with him, but uh, I think when Artful asked him again, 
players turned around and they said, um, no, I want to be, oh, I'm down with tough arts, I'm in tough arts. Shortly after that, I think we had about three pieces dogged out by Artful Dodger. I think, what's all this about? And he was running around saying that we was biting his stuff and this and that. Anyway, my personal opinion about it is, is cause Plaz has knocked him back, he doesn't like it, you know, so he's taking it out on us. So, he, and, and Score is actually, for the book, he's actually got a statement out of that, that scenario. And it's proper stole out. I mean, I had to laugh at it. It is proper stole out, but he doesn't tell the full story. The full story is, there's two of them. You know, not just Artful going over us, it's Kev One. So we go and deal with Kev One. C sees him in Catford, chases after him, he gets away. But we, we, we know where he lives. And I said to Scott, I said, um, after all that, where's their next piece? He said, I've, <laughs> I've never seen any of their stuff. I said, exactly. He said, that crew don't exist anymore. And I don't think they ever painted again on the street. Simple as that, and that's how ruthless it was getting now. He started, you know, it was, it was sort of going away from graph, graphing, painting. It's more about beef. Yeah, yeah it's it just, just got kind of stupid, and then, you know, people were starting to get robbed in it now, aren't they? You know, people would like, people would hang out, <laughs> paint shops, and wait for people to come out and just take their paint off of them. You know. I know, I know the TU were like notorious for that, but um, who's untouchable? Yeah, the untouchables. Uh, I know, you know, because like I painted, um, I painted a raised thing, like a like a memorial sort of thing, and um, the steam was there, and I had never met the untouchables. I kind of got online, I saw they was doing a thing, and I said, like, you got room for one more. I've always been a fan of theirs, anyway. For me, North London, people out of North London were the people doing their trains. And some, look at some of them trains, Ganja, Ray's, Cast, all them, them people did, yeah. And Graf looks better on a train. I used to love uh, their, hand, their, their hand styles as well, up like North London, like Fume and ID, yeah. all them lot. Yeah. And they're like, I mean, the TU used to do that, like that, that stabbing TU tag, you know, that, that even their writing's a bit like, like it's like a stabbing yeah, sort yeah. of style. And I've always been a fan of this, so, um, yeah, I went over there and, and, and I kind of like what they'd, they've done with the crew because they never really stopped, have they? I mean, oh. they're still going now, it's like they're just handing it on to the next generation. I went over there and painted a raised piece there and, uh, I remember Steve, Steam, Steam was there and he was like, who's that in the corner there? And I said, oh, some geezer called Scarf. And he was like, are you joking me? And he come over and we had a bit of a joke and all that. I so was like, didn't have beat back in the 80s, did we? And I had a laugh <laughs> and I said, you know, you know, you ham it up a little bit, didn't you? And next thing I knew, he, he's, he's asked ask Scarf to join us. You know, see if Scarf will come in. You can't say no to that crew, you know. It's so like, you're, you're, you're in T to you now as well? Yeah, yeah, I paint with him now. Yeah, so... But I pretty much paint with anyone, really. You know. I paint with uh, Divine. Oh, Divine? What, from Divine from back in the day? Yeah, Divine. I Divine's still Divine. painting. Divine yeah. had a... He had a wicked hand style too. Yeah, yeah. He, he, Divine from South East? Yeah. Yeah, he used, to, he used to be with, like, he hang about with uh, Seven Up and all that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I can't believe that. Do you remember um, Do you remember that tag in Lewisham as well? It was the longest tag I've ever seen in my life, and it, it said extremely fresh. Did I you ever see that? No, I can't remember that. Honestly, extremely fresh. I'll never forget it. Right, I yeah. thought, how does he write that? It must, must have taken him, like, about three, four minutes. Yeah, I mean... It's like writing the untouchables, though, isn't it? It's that's like, it's well, like isn't too it? many letters, yeah, yeah. you know. So it's like, T T U, T U, you know. Go, going back to Tough Arts um, scarf, when did uh, when did Cash come in a little bit slightly later? Do you know what? Weren't Cash a little bit younger? Yeah, Cash was younger, and uh, 
the thing with Cash at that time, he was uh, he was sort of down with giants and he was out with form all the time. And um, it was quite, yeah, I was thinking of this the other day, like when you used to get on the 63 bus, form would always write form 63 or something, yeah? I never saw, I don't think I've seen form write a tag, London Giants. And Form was like a free spirit anyway, he'd paint with anyone and you know, he was, you know, he never got involved in any beef or whatever, you know. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I like, I, I like Form. Yeah, I, I can't, yeah. do you remember Form, he had really long hair? Yeah. I yeah. couldn't believe that, because this is way before like the rave years, you know. You don't know his name though, do you? No. His real name? No. <laughs> Tell Cash is going to hate me for this, right? Can you say on camera? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. When we <laughs> when we done New Cross Yard, right, we just know everyone by our street name sort of thing. Well, most people know that I'm called Darren. Darren, you yeah, know, yeah. Cece's called Darren. And um, we were sitting there, because it's a lot of sitting about. It's a lot of waiting about before you do the job. And of course, when you come out, you're sitting to watch, watch the train roll out. And we're just sitting there, just winding each other up. He's your name anyway. He, gets sl he got slated for that. Did he? <laughs> <laughs> your parents not like you. That sort of thing. Were you having a laugh with him? Yeah, of course, yeah. It was all done, yeah, yeah, done in jest. No, no. You know, it weren't, it weren't personal. No, 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 just, no, no. That's what you do when you're that's kids, isn't it? You that's wind how, each other up. That's how it was back then, wasn't it? Yeah. You do, like, yeah, have a little, little like, laugh about things. Yeah, but I never saw him, I never saw him right up giants. But, yeah, Cash was... Cash was just up everywhere in South London, like, and he was painting with a form. And I was like, I was like that at Cease because I think him and Cease lived pretty close. And Cease would bump into him all the time and they would go out bumming and doing this and that. So I said to Cease, why don't you ask Cash to come in? And he asked him and he, he, he said, yeah. But um, what I could, what I asked Cash is like, he was with Giants. Why did Giants never ask you to come in? Yeah. And he said to me, he said to me, well, they were older than me and they was like, they were more skilled than me and, and all this. And I was like, rubbish. I mean, look at them pieces he's put up. It's just, they're just smooth. The one, the one he done in the old Kent Road warehouse. Yeah. I mean, that, that was next level, wasn't it? With the green. Yeah, with the yeah, yellow, yeah, yellow yeah. and uh, I think it might have had a bit of blue in it as yeah. well. But that, that, that was just like unbelievable yeah. as well, wasn't it? It was, so, it was so clean, wasn't it? Yeah. And I thought, he's just, you know, ask him. And, uh, and Cash was like, yeah, 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 big time. You know what I mean? And um, <laughs> yeah, I, I did read something about Cash joining Tough Arts. And um, I think I think it was one of them pieces like that warehouse or something like that. And someone had said, Oh, that was Cash's audition piece to get in Tough Arts. <laughs> and I told you, I said to Cash about this, and Cash just turned around and we went, what, Graf's got talent? <laughs> now, if I said that to Cash back yeah. in the day, yeah. oh, you got audition, he would have told me where to stick the face. He would have laughed at you. Yeah, exactly. I said, audition, I said, where do they get these stories from? You know, they're just so exaggerated. But, uh, yeah, so, Cash on board, and then then with Cash, Cash and Cease, you get a bunch of kings. You get you get that now, yeah, and they would they would go out, whereas someone else would just go out do a throw up, like silver dub, quick thing. They're going out, sort of taking the throw up, but doing a piece with bunch of and. They're taking out probably the hottest spots around South London. I mean, there's a spot in Denmark Hill where the hospital is. It's like where the buses sort of stop near the sort of the stations around there. There's a, what, a wall on the hill. Well, the same side as the station. So no, the same side. You know as... the Salvation Army bit. There's an estate, and then you've got that Salvation Army. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There's a little estate there, but there's the, 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 this kind of hut thing there, and Cease went and 
Whereas anybody else would have just done a quick throw up on it. He goes and pieces the bloody wall, you know what I mean? And it's like, it's so open to get nicked and they were just doing that. And another place... Uh, they, they, they was ruthless, weren't they? Oh yeah, they ruthless. just didn't give a fuck. So, but that's how you get the bunt. You get the bunt that kings through cease and cash. They start doing that as well, on top of that. And of course, we're letting everyone know that we ain't running out of pain. You know, we, we've got so much pain, you, you ain't get, you're not even yeah, yeah. gonna get close. And that's the whole thing about graph. You know, you, you're bigger than what you are. You know, you boast about it and all that sort of business. I have like a favorite, um, you could say weapon of choice. Like, did you have a favorite Pain, obviously, Bunlack must have been your favourite pain. Oh, Bunlack, nothing else. Nothing. There would be nothing else but Bunlack. Do you, me do you remember making like like a like a big pen out a Bunlack spray can, and you get like a sponge and stick the sponge on the end of it? See, you see, all the all the pens, all that pen business there, like you know the stainable ink and all that. That sort of came pretty much after we finished. People were sort of getting in more into that. I remember they used to do the old, remember the shoe polish? That's right. You know, yeah, with yeah, the sponge. Yeah. yeah. They would just empty it out and make their own ink and just go and do that on the windows and the buses and all that sort of business. But uh, we, we, we used to make them out of Kodak. Uh, you remember the little plastic thing that you put the film in to get your photographs developed? Yeah, yeah, the little yeah, plastic. Yeah. Yeah. We used to make them out of that. And also, do you remember the, uh, the, the blackboard mark, the, the wiper on the to take the chalk off the blackboard, like, at school. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we'd, like, we'd get ink and we'd squirrel it all the way along, the six-inch, like, uh, <laughs> thing, and we'd put, like, a red ink, red ink on it and a black ink on it. Yeah. And literally, you'd have, like, a six, six or seven-inch tag. Yeah. It was yeah. massive. You'd but, have to do it, like, on a bus stop. Yeah. Because like, you couldn't do it on a bus. But you could see, like, like later on, tags were getting... They were moving away from, what was it, the heading... It in 850s. Yeah, and pentels and all yeah, that. Yeah, Tor yeah, pens. Yeah, so it was moving away. It was getting bigger and bigger, wasn't it? The tags were getting bigger. Oh, we're get, yeah, yeah. that's getting ridiculous. Yeah. Back uh, then, as we said, like the South, the South East buses absolutely got like battered. But another thing that also, um, you know, also got hammered was like, it was a lot of wasteland, like industrial estates back then, because, you know, London wasn't really developed on, so there was a lot of wasteland. And you'd, you, especially the place like Woolwich and yeah. Nine Elms Cold Stores uh, down in uh, Vauxhall and places like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd go, you'd Brit go. Layers there. Arms. Brit Layers Arms. Brit Arms, yeah. 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 All, all, you had loads of places like that. You don't get right. them now. You don't, because they're all, before you know it, they're like, there's, there's a new building on there or, or there's security in there. You know, you just don't get them anymore. I remember going down Woolwich and I know you, 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 you painted down there quite a bit. And we used to get chased out by the by the dogs. <laughs> Remember the big Alsatians down there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you you done that piece? I was going to say to you, you done that piece down there, the uh, the short short thin rock. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And you had one character one side with drone two and like a name belt, and you had that uh, the other character the other side like with the big chin. Yeah, yeah. I think I think you got it there in that. that yeah. There. So scarf. Was there like was there any other spots that you used to? Uh, Piece, piecing. I mean, obviously, uh, as we were saying, like industrial wastelands and all that. But what, what other, what other little spots were there? For us, it was pretty much uh, mere wall. I mean, there was loads of little bits of waste ground around there. And Colbert Blow Lane. What all them little, all them arches? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Yeah. But um, pretty much there, uh, Bricklayer's Arms. You know, yeah, that was a good spot, wasn't it? Yeah, it, I mean, it, you had loads of walls in there. Uh, West Ham kind of stumbled on that. I think we was out looking for Bunlack shops and kind of saw a spot down there and thought, yeah, yeah. Started painting down Woolwich. Grove Park. Grove Park, yeah. Grove Park was uh, yeah. where we'd done the nasty base. And that piece just stayed up there until until it fell off the wall, really, you know. But uh, your pieces sort of came with like a reputation as well, like you don't touch them, sort of thing. Yeah, you know? yeah. 
Whereas you don't get that now. <laughs> right, if you, you, everyone goes over everyone. Yeah, you, you, know paint, I mean? you paint something now. Uh, don't last two seconds, does it? You know, it's not even dry, is it? Pretty much South London, though. But we didn't, we didn't really sort of. We didn't, we didn't go over to like Westbourne Park or, or stuff like that. It was just pointless. I know Giants went over there, but their stuff would just be. They'd just go over their stuff. You know, it wouldn't last there that long. I think the last piece Juski done for Aerosol, oh, I mean, that stayed up. I mean, people respected that piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. But um, pretty much just operated out of uh, South London and just pretty much kept it there. Back in 1985, uh, Creative Arts uh, teamed up with uh, SEV South East Vandals to form, um, obviously, uh, London Giants. Who, who was in the full crew, London Giants? London Giants, you would have... Uh, you'd have Flyboy. <laughs> yeah. Um, Shame. Shame 181. Juicy. Yeah. Form. Shame's brother, Freshkey. And Zone 1. Yeah, I think that's it. Was it free as well? Yeah. Free. Free. I don't know about free. Yeah, no, yeah. that's the, they're the they're the ones that I know. And um, you pretty much, the, shame shame form and um, Juicy uh, the main painters. Because I think a little bit later as well. I think a guy called a writer called Hayes uh, Cast. Yeah. Cast was also and also Sned. Oh right. I think okay. we're down down with giants as well. No, I don't think they, I don't think they were down with giants. I think um, Hayes is cast. Yeah, yeah. And of course they all know each other from the Supreme team. Yeah. You know, and um, you know, cast kind of moved away, uh, moved from South London to go. Oh, so London. was cast. Cast was from South London. Yeah, it was Hayes. Oh, it was right. Hayes. He was yeah, in the yeah. uh, he was in the Supreme team. Yeah, that's that's what I thought, but yeah. um, I didn't realise whether he'd like he'd move he he come down south to. Well, I don't I don't know if he's like from south, but he was painting in south right. with with uh, Supreme Team. Yeah, yeah. And uh, when they split up, I mean, he goes from he goes from Hayes to Cast, and the King of Trains, doesn't it? you know. For me, for me, Cast is. Uh, you know, cast is king, as far as I'm concerned. Like that whole graph era, cast, cast is. He was a man. He, 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 number one. You know, and you had, you know, you got some great train right, writers as well. You know, it, it, too many to mention. You know, Ganja, Robo, Prime. You know, Busquan, Hate. I mean, the list is just endless. With Steam, Hopper. You know, he's just, you know, you're always going to miss someone out there. Coma, yeah, no, that's right. You know, Coma, Casby, you know, you just the list is endless. Elk. Fashion fashion was, a, I suppose, was a bit of a big part of that kind of scene as well. You know, people rocking the Kangals and all, all like the hip hop side of things and, you know, all that kind of B boy style as well. I mean, what, 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 what sort of style was you rocking? Or was you rock, like, looking like the South London style with the Yakka Scootum and all that? I, I I wasn't rocking. I was rocking just a weird style. Was I? Yeah, I was just like you know. Okay, I had the trainers and all that. You know. What what trainers were you wearing? Like Reeboks? I think we was wearing. Oh, I can't remember now. Do you know what? High tech squash. No way. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're, you're taking a piss. Now, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Uh, Shorty, don't don't upset Shorty Blitz. <laughs> but uh, no, 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 definitely, no, definitely not them. <laughs> I can't remember, you know. But I, I, I remember dressing funny just to just to rob. You know, but. I definitely had a decent pair of trainers, <laughs> but I can't remember what. So was you was you doing not the the, the the chippy jeans and all that? Not really. No. I mean, I mean, Drome and all that and uh, and players and all that. They would they would have the like the jean jean jackets and yeah, the leather yeah. jackets that sort yeah. of you know. 
that sort of stuff, like the leather bomber jackets, that sort of, they were rocking that sort of stuff, but. Was you a bit more casual? I, I kind of like, you wouldn't think I was a graffiti writer, you know, I've, and all my clothes were robbed. Was there any, any crews out there or any writers that you kind of feared, or did you fear no one? No one. No. No one. No. You had to take a you had to take on the whole the whole thing. You know, and um, if you kinda of look at our sort of layup, it is we're kind of like we're known for threatening people. We're known for, you know, if we need to someone, we're known for that. I mean, Cease is just known as a complete lunatic in that, you know. Um, that was like a fear factor. And we're not just one crew as well, you know. We're like, we've got seven up as well. And a few people got up in that little thing. I mean, you had a few idiots in it that would just, you know, run their mouth or stuff like that, but, um, no, I didn't fear, nah, not at all. Didn't fear no And one. we didn't, well, we pretty much, where we just kind of stayed in South London, we pretty much knew everyone around there. So, we never thought like, let's cross over, let's go to, uh, you know, Northwest London or somewhere like that. I mean, we go, you know, Hammersmith or, you know, Westbourne Grove, just to look at pieces and stuff like that. But um, we never got no trouble there a garden, go up there, I mean, um, you know, see who's up there and that sort of thing, and we are just sort of wait for them to go to spats, because, you know, they will go, we never went spats, we are not interested, they'll go, we'll have a look around, meet and greet a few people, and then we just go robbing, we just, that, that'd be our day, like our day, we just. Did you, uh, was you, did you ever like, uh, some sort of see Chrome Angels up there much? Oh yeah, they was up there all the time. Did like you speak, Mode speak, was. speak to uh, Mode and Pro I never Pride? Spoke, I never spoke to any of them. No. I never. I was never one of those people that went up there and signed my peace book. You know, I don't, I don't really interact with anyone up there. You know, if you, if you speak to people when they see me up there, I pretty much don't talk to anyone. You know, giants come up there, I'll say hello, Prime, I'll say hello to, and a couple of other people. I mean, if someone came up to me and went, oh, can you sign my book? No problem, you know what I mean? Because you used to get them up there, so I did a look at my pieces and stuff like that, no problem. You know, you encourage that. But um, no, I was never one of them to... No, no. You know, want a photo you know. with them or nothing like that. Oh, no, no, I wasn't no. like a, a, a super fan or nothing like that. Yeah, it was about it was about me, it was about my crew. And I wasn't, I, I couldn't give a toss about anyone up there really, to be to be fair. Yeah, of course I'm friends with Prime and people like that. I mean, I, I've known Prime since day one. And we're like, we're good mates and stuff like that. Where, where was Prime from? Prime's like more sort of Brixton way. Oh, is he? Yeah, so. I remember first seeing some Hellraiser's piece down in Woolwich that he'd done. I'll tell you what, that, that was really good as well. No, he's, you know I mean? yeah, he's wicked. I remember, I remember coming back in 94 with Regret. And um, Regret regret said, uh, come, come to this place, because it was all like sort of like Halls of Fame now, you know? And it was like, come to this place. I think it was Fulham or somewhere like that. And we went down there. And there was a couple of guys there painting. And I didn't really look at them, I just kind of went, went in there and it was like, scarf. <laughs> I look around, it's Prime, isn't it? Prime's painting down there. I said, he's still going. He's like, yeah, 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 still painting. He's like, you're doing anything? And I was like, I've done a couple of silver doves, but nah, I'm not. It ain't a comeback sort of thing, you know? It's like, yeah, I'm with regret and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. But, um, I met him for a drink like last year. I was supposed to paint Stockwell with him and we was all like all set to go but I'm in Essex and he's, he's like I don't know Norwood or somewhere like that. And that never happened? No it's, it was raining on the day and he was like he kind of like phoned me and he said oh weather looks a bit shit so call it off 
Yeah, yeah. And then two hours before he painted, he was like, I'm down here already, come down. I was like, I'm in Essex, mate. <laughs> so it never happened, but he painted in there. And um, yeah, I love, yeah, Prime, yeah, I love Prime, you know what I mean? For, for me, Prime's like you know, one of the governors of, 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 of Graf. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, his tag is just, I mean, that tag is just like, that, it's got a lovely tag in it. That it tag of destroy like pieces. That a tag. little love art above yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not a nice tag. Yeah. And he's pretty much painted with everyone, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Without a doubt. Is it, um, you know, going back to the cruise and all that, all the different names, players, Artful Dodger. I mean, I don't, have you got any idea how the other crew members got their names? Like Cash. Do you know how Cash got his name Cash? <laughs> Cash. Cash by name, cash by nature. <laughs> Big shout you, out to you Cash. Want to see, well. You want to see what car he's driving now? <laughs> <laughs> he was destined to be called Cash. <laughs> and he's always going to be laughing at this. Big shout out to Cash. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And how, about, how about Plaz? That's like Plaz is quite an unusual name. Anyone know yeah. Plaz, Plaz got his I, name? I don't know. I, I've never asked. And none of the others? Nah. No, no, you just, you just, but no, no one ever asked me why scarf. I mean, yeah. Apart from scarf, I mean, score did. Why scarf? Because that's kind of an unusual name. I think score's the only person that's asked me, and I said, because it's, it, it, it's different, isn't it? It's different. You don't expect it to be, you know, a graph name, do you? And, no, that's um, right. And you can't have a scarf too, can you? Because it doesn't no. work. <laughs> no, 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 it ain't going to is it? And I said to him, there's, many... there's only one scarf. Yeah, I said to him, how many scores? And he went hundreds. <laughs> 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 I said, there you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you got to, you got to, it's, it's hard to be original, isn't it? Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Uh, did you ever get nabbed as well? Did you ever get nicked? Oh, uh, twice. Uh, one was early on. I think I was painting New, uh, New Cross Estate. I was there, the ghetto. Well, wood, uh, wood, woodpecker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one. I, yeah. I, I, I got back there, but it was early. It was early on. They didn't really know what to do with us. I tell you, what, you had to have some bollocks to be painting around there because them, them areas are proper tough. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. My, my cousins lived on Woodpecker Estate, and it's like, you know, there were certain people that would run run that estate, and if you're if you weren't a local or whatever, oh was yeah, that, but that was London in general, though. No, you know, that's right. That, that's why I mean, being a writer, when you started crossing over to other people's uh, like turf, trust me, they'll run you out of here. Yeah, yeah. You know, but um, yeah, I knew a few people on there anyway, so. So you was alright. Yeah, but I got I got nicked for that. But it was just like a stupid, they, they nicked me, called my mum down. My mum put on the sympathy, you know, sympathy thing and it was a caution and out you go. Got any like big highlights from back then? Big highlights, yeah, things that kind of really stood out to you. In, with um, like different people now sort of thing, you know, I mean, I've done pieces with like regret, you know, work with Score and Merck. Uh, so you painted in the same place as them. I mean, that's that's pretty up there for me, you know. Working with people like that, especially like working with a two year old. But back in the day, you wouldn't have you wouldn't have got that. No. So no. who are you rating nowadays? Do you ever like going check anything out or? Yeah, there's some good pieces out there if you know where to look. But um, I suppose for me, I kind of like people like. Uh, I think Tom Blackford, I mean, I think he's pretty much got it so, sewn up. You know, Score, Merck, of course, you know, Cause. Uh, Mr. Cools, yeah, I, I, yeah, love, I yeah. love his characters. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, Tizer, yeah, he does some good pieces, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, Vortex, Arches. People, they, who's who's the geezer good. that does the uh, like the three D style? Oh, Love Pusher. With, yeah, Love Pusher. He he does he does some nice bits, doesn't he? Fan of it. Oh, you but, don't like uh, it? No, it's not. I, I mean, he's he's got skill and they do look good. Yeah, yeah. But uh, 
It's, it's not really my cup of tea, but it, it's no, like it actually is. what he does, though, wouldn't it? Oh yeah, he probably stands. Like, out, like the, yeah. the paint, the paints that he uses and all that. It's kind yeah. of like right eye catching. It like pops out at you. I think it's quite a look like a luminous. It's like at night time. I'm pretty sure that it glows up. Yeah, but you can get this paint now, can't you? We can uh, you spray on top of it, and it's supposed to glow up in the night. Can you? Yeah, I think so. I think it's called like a, I think it's a Montana. Well, like that stuff that Del Boy used to have. Do you remember, remember <laughs> when he not, painted? I don't have not, not quite as. Uh, Do you remember when he painted that that <laughs> Chinese shop? Yeah. Chinese shop with the yellow paint. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Luminous, wasn't so, it? Save on electricity, eh? <laughs> <laughs> but, that was brilliant, wasn't it? Yeah, you get this. I think it's called night glow or something. I don't know if it works, but yeah, you know. But you got that. But the paint's changed massively. I was going to say so. Yeah, I was going to ask you that. How, how, how has it changed? I mean, you've got different nozzles now, have not you? I mean, back in the day, yeah. it was only what I was only I only knew of, knew of one nozzle. We used to take like nozzles off for like spray um, hairspray and stuff like that, and see if Did they you? fit on the cans yeah, and stuff. Yeah. That, you know, stuff like that. But um, you got nozzles for everything now. The paint is next like, quality, it's different quality now, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, Buntlack was is a matte paint, you know. And now you've got like, you know, you've got matte, uh, matte gloss. You know, you've got so many variations, and um, it's the pressure as well with the cans, mm. you know, to, and it. Coming back and trying to like work out what paint works best for you, for you was quite it was, it was quite tricky as well, you know. I think I started off with um, Montana Black, and um, I was using a nozzle on that, thinking no, oh, it should be alright, and it was just like a fire extinguisher. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was just, and I was trying to outline with this this thing, and it just, I must have went over this outline about 10 times to sort of get what I was doing. And I was just like, and I, I was painting with Divine, and Divine was like, no, no, just use a different nozzle. <laughs> it's so like, you know, you try that one, and I was like, no, I don't like this paint, you know. And, but as I've gone on, for me, it's the 94. For me, I kind of like painting with him. If I use a Montana black, it would be just for to fill in. Yeah, yeah. You know that sort of thing. But I tend to use just matte. I don't really go for the, you know, part gloss, part matte. You know. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I've had such a blast from the past. I mean, you mentioned him a few, especially like Divine. I mean, yeah, I yeah, remember yeah. Divine like really well. Do you know what I mean? I'm sure he had that two tone tag gun as well with the black and the red. Yeah, I like, painted. I painted with him quite recently. Like, um, when was the first time you uh, you hooked up with uh, Drone then? Drone two. Uh, it was on a, an estate. I kind of done a piece on a, an estate in um, Bermondsey, Seawood Sil Estate. Right. And it's kind of where I met like people like Mad Two, Caution, and like the, the Caution was. Uh, Drone 2's cousin. Right. So I kind of met Drone 2 through 7 Up and then started, like, you know, started getting chatting and stuff like that. And then I think we had a job on in the park and uh, I'd done this piece, like graffiti, there. And we just, a Plaz was there and um, you know, seven up drone was there, and we all kind of done a bit on the piece, so it kind of just started from there, and we just started hanging about with each other from then. So was you, was you and drone really like tight, like like you you and him were kind of? Oh yeah, yeah, it was we was good mates. Yeah. But, um, he kind of brought Cease in, and uh, me and drone just because Cease was a little bit younger, and we used to wind up Cease, like me and drone. Like constantly just wind him up, you know. So oh, are you letting people take the piss out? Of you? Yeah, you know. You need to go and sort that out, you know. We just, just having a little, the, little bit of banter with him. Yeah, we just yeah. He's a proper like, you know. Go on, watch him go. Look. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, amazing, uh, amazing talent. I mean, drone, drone two was um, he was a character king, wasn't he? Yeah, I think he. Um, I think I think he was he was right up there with Mode Two, 
campaign. Yeah. yeah. They kind of fell out. I think he kind of... I think he feared uh, Drone 2 a little bit when he, he saw some of that stuff in that book. Because if you look at their stuff, yeah, they're different characters, but they're very similar. So, I mean, what Mo's doing now, I mean, come on, it's that. Yeah. Oh, it's next level, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Imagine if Drone was still here. Yeah. You know, what he would be doing. And he he actually got signed up to Walt Disney. So he was that like, good. He, he was on his way, sort of thing, you know. Mm. And then all that rubbish in Peckham happened. No, massive loss. Massive, massive talent. Yeah. You know. Oh. And yeah, yeah. Drone's family, isn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And he was funny as well, you know. Good crack. Yeah, funny fun. <laughs> yeah, missed massively. Yeah. You know. Uh, just to, you know. It's, but, I mean, you look at some of his stuff now, he's still, I mean, some of that stuff still gets reposted. And, you know, he, he just stands up as well. Some of that stuff uh, he's done from back then, you know, it still old, holds up now, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, that's right, you know. Yeah. Listen, it was an absolute honour. Yeah? Chatting to you. I've got some brilliant, brilliant stories out. Yeah. Um, and any, anybody watching this, also subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out the other interviews I've done with, like, you've seen, have you seen any yet, Scarf? I've watched uh, pu the... Public the, Enemy? No, uh, part, part one. Oh, part one, so Yeah, yes. I watched that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah big shout-out to part one, he's, yeah. a, he's a great guy. Hey, legend. Yeah, yeah. Real, real death squad. Yeah. Yeah, so I've interviewed part one, Ragga Twins, Public Enemy. Yeah, I've seen the Ragga Twins one, yeah. That's a good yeah, one, yeah, really yeah, good yeah. one. Um, Dolby D, I mean... Pff, do you know what I mean? There's been so many. And to have you in my cab, it, that means a lot as well, because obviously, you know, I I looked up to your style back then. I mean, the scarf tag, do you know what I mean? Was next level. It's still going. Still Is going. it? Well, Don't that's, worry, that's, it's still that's, going. That's, that's the <laughs> and will you, uh, will you sign my uh, my book as well? Just a little, little, scarf, little scarf tag in it. And I'll, I'll do you a little one back as well. Yeah, in the yeah, book. go for it. And I was going to say to you as well, anyone watching this, we're coming to the end of the interview now, but I was speaking to a mate of mine, yeah, his name's the Sly Fader, and he um, he's, he's from like the old school as well, from back in like the early 80s, mid 80s, and he does record production. And he's actually produced a track, and he's dedicated it to you, and he's called it Scarf Face. <laughs> Scarface. Scarface meets the Sly Fader. So what I'll do, them photographs that you've given me, I'm going to put them on at the end of this interview and basically put that track over the top of the... Um... Is this on you now? Yeah. Yeah? Do you know what? I might be able to ring him and, and play, it, play it down the phone to you. I don't go know, on, go for it. Go for it. But um, listen, Scarf, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get you back to the station. All right, brother. And it was an on honour chatting to you. No, 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 pleasure, mate. I hope yeah. you enjoyed it as well. I love it. Yeah, love yeah, yeah. nice one, Steve. Yeah, nice all one. Right? Mate, right, make sure you got your bunt like, all right?
Bye.